Upgrade is a 2018 Australian sci-fi action film written and directed by Lee Winnell, the filmmaker known for his work on Saw, the Insidious franchise, and The Invisible Man. In a world where advanced technology has become interwoven in every aspect of life, the story centers on Grey Trace, Logan Marshall Green, a car mechanic whose skepticism toward new technology is tested when tragedy strikes. Left as a quadriplegic after a terrible accident, Grey embraces the cutting edge of futuristic tech in order to obtain justice. Acting as both a satire and cautionary tale about the ethics of biomechanics and our lust for technological progress, Upgrade is an arresting action flick with sizable ambition. I call it STEM. What does it do? Literally anything. Can I make babies and play football? Set in the year 2046, we follow Gray, a humble mechanic who lives with his wife in a bustling city somewhere in the United States. Gray restores classic cars for wealthy clients and Asher works for Cobalt, a massive tech company that specializes in robotic limbs for wounded soldiers. While Gray seemingly despises the rampant rise of automated technology, Asher helps ground him in an ever-changing world. You do realize that you're talking to a car, right? I hear you talking to yours all the time. At least mine can talk back. <laughs> One night, after delivering a car to Aaron Keen, a reclusive genius and CEO of another huge tech company, Vessel Computers, their self-driving car malfunctions and crashes. Four men then appear and drag them out of the car, murdering Asher and shooting Gray in the neck, leaving him paralyzed from the waist down. Are you there, Gray? May I ask if Asha will be joining us for dinner? Months later, after recuperating in the hospital, Gray returns home and starts to grapple with his new life, confined to a wheelchair. Meanwhile, police officer Detective Cortez attempts to track down the suspects that destroyed his life, but comes up empty-handed. Growing increasingly despondent and depressed, he looks for ways to end it all, and winds up back in the hospital when his AI alerts emergency services. Extending the olive branch of technology, Keen arrives with a solution, offering Gray an experimental surgery where his newest microchip called stem would restore use of his limbs must be frustrating for you you're someone who liked to get things done with their hands now you can't what if i told you i could offer you something that would enable you to walk again although he was initially put off by the idea gray eventually agrees leading to a secretive operation at keen's home in which stem is implanted directly into his spine almost immediately granting him supreme control of his faculties before long gray realizes that he can actually communicate with stem and together with their combined abilities can track down ash's killers and finally discover their motive the man who shot your wife there's no gun in his hand freeze the screen at the moment he fires she was shot that means he had a gun she was shot a gun implanted inside his hand. Emboldened by his renewed physicality and desire for answers, Gray and Stem begin to hunt down various criminals tied to the case. As Gray struggles to come up with a plan, he starts to rely more and more on Stem, especially the chip's ability to turn his body into a brutal and efficient killing machine. It's not long before Gray's quest for revenge leaves a trail of dead bodies, catching the attention of Detective Cortez. But feigning paralysis in an effort to keep his high-tech surgery a secret, he continues to stay one step ahead. But you didn't know that I'm a fucking ninja. <laughs> When Keen starts to realize what Gray's up to, he threatens to disable and remove Stem entirely. Stem then advises Gray to employ the help of a talented hacker who removes the limitations of the system. While this lack of restriction helps him get closer to Fist, the man who murdered his wife with a high-tech gun implanted into his hand, it also grants Stem autonomy over Gray's body. By the time Gray decides he's in too deep and wants to end the hunt, Stem starts calling the shots, using Gray's body to act without his consent, and things start to get scary. I no longer need your permission to act. I am the one controlling your limbs, not you. If I cease to operate, you cease to move. Eventually, Stem and Grey track down Fisk and discover an upsetting truth. Asher was never the intended target on that fateful night. Instead, the attack was ordered by Keen to paralyze Grey so he could be convinced to undergo the Stem procedure. However, after confronting Keen, an even worse truth is revealed. Keen was merely a puppet for Stem, who had gained sentience during development and needed a pure human host without additional computer implants to achieve the next step in its evolutionary process. I don't run this company anymore. Now I answer to someone. Someone much smarter than I ever could be. He's in your neck. As Stem takes total control over Gray's body, he attempts to defy it by shooting himself in the neck. With Gray waking up in a hospital bed no longer paralyzed, and with Asher at his side, at first we assume his experiences were simply a nightmare. However, we realize the true terror of the situation, that this is merely a fabricated world inside his mind, acting as a comfortable prison for his consciousness while Stem controls him. Despite its indie-style production, Upgrade manages to excel beyond most big-budget sci-fi films, blending the whodunit mystery with some clever world-building and exploration of themes. 
After slowly setting up the story and introducing us to the characters, it takes its time to make us care about Grey and his plight. We watch as he struggles with his paralysis, haunted by memories of his wife and the life that could have been, and we're pretty excited to see the practical applications of the device its creator says can do anything. At first, STEM appears to be a miracle, with its efficiency and obedience making it the perfect tool. The action sequences where Grey is being controlled by STEM are equal parts hilarious, awesome, and terrifying once we realise it's actually Grey that is a tool being used by the chip. By the time the movie graduates to the overtop cyberpunk action, it's already established a serious and dramatic tone, and we deeply understand Grey's personal motivation and want to see him accomplish his goals. Amid all the gory fights and futuristic tech, there's an underlying message about our reliance on technology, elevated with elements of existentialism. As Winnell stated when working on the script, his interest was not in robotics, but rather humans willingly putting tech into their bodies. These themes are perfectly displayed in the dichotomy between Grey and everybody else, as well as Grey and Stem, which starts as a hopeful and promising partnership, but grows into something ominous. You need to finish this before he kills both of us. You know what this means, Grey. We're not finished yet. Throughout the film, Grey continues to let Stem take more and more control over his body, but his never-ending reliance on the chip causes him to ignore some pretty serious red flags. By the halfway point, Stem has already established its ability to manipulate human emotions for a desired outcome and shows a general disregard for human life, but Grey continues to grant it more power. He even starts to subconsciously grant Stem ownership over his body and consider them one and the same, potentially as a defense mechanism to shield himself from the horrifying violence his own body is carrying out. By the end, as Stem takes over his mind, he's basically surrendered both mentally and physically, unable to reverse the choices that led to his demise. As impressive as the themes are, it's the grimy fight scenes and impressive camera work that really sell the immense power of Stem. Thanks to the genius gyroscopic camera tricks, each punch, kick and dodge has an incredible sense of momentum. The fights are often ended just as quickly as they start, with Stem and Grey ruthlessly and efficiently dispatching any opponent in mere seconds. I'm going to end this quickly. <laughs> While the action is entertaining, the kills are visceral, in your face, and exceptionally brutal, serving as a constant reminder of how inhumane Stem is capable of being. There's also a great lead up to the first fight scene, which doesn't take place until 40 minutes into the film, so when it comes, man is it exciting. Time and time again, Winnell has proven his ability to work under tight budgetary constraints, and apart from 2004's Saw, which he co-wrote with director James Wan, Upgrade is possibly the best display of that skill. There's an undeniable grit and grime to Upgrade that is further intensified by the thematic colour grading. Rundown areas of town are filmed with warm and muddy colours, while areas with excess tech are colourful, yet cold at the same time, representing the clash between the old world and the new. Logan Marshall Green is amazing as Grey, proving his mastery of the craft with a varied performance that highlights his range. He effortlessly transitions from a playful and loving husband to a tormented man trapped in his own body, and even when he regains the ability to walk, there's a notable pain behind his eyes that drives his vengeance. By the end, we realise that he was never able to let go and move on. Perhaps Stem realised this and opted to give him what he wanted, his wife and old life back. Personally, I'm a bit of a cynic and think Stem was tired of the limitations and simply wanted to be set free, so I guess at least it gave him something nice to do, rather than placing him in a dark room that he can't escape. It's the thought that counts. Brutal, dramatic, and lots of fun to watch. Upgrade is a nihilistic look at the dangers of AI, and another example of how great directors are not restricted by small budgets. 